Hello everybody. Today we are going to be reviewing The Addams Family 2. Uh, so let's go through the voices of who was playing who. So Oscar Isaac plays uh, Gomez Adams. Charlize Theron is Morticia Adams. Chloe Grace Moretz is Wednesday Adams. Uh, we actually have a different voice uh, compared to the first one. The first uh, one that played Pugsley was uh, Finn Wolfhard, if I'm pronouncing his name right. But in this movie, it's... Uh, Jason Walton. Uh, Nick Kroll came back as Uncle Fester. Snoop Dogg is the little hairy dude It, which is actually extremely funny. Um, Bette Midler played the grandmother. Uh, Conrad Vernon played Lurch and the Spirit of the House. Oh, okay. I didn't know that he had both parts. Uh, Bill Hader played Cyrus Strange, who was the villain in this movie. Uh, Wallace Shawn played Mr. Mustello. And Brian Summer played Big Bad Ronnie, and that is the main cast. Everybody else was just kind of... Um, oh, no, I guess... Oh, and uh, Shamini Lee played Ophelia. And who? what was his wife's name? What was Cyrus's wife's name? Hmm. Weird. I don't even see her on here. Unless I'm just missing her name. Interesting. Anyhow, that was I. That would I. That's what I would call the main cast, I guess. Besides his, besides Cyrus's wife's name, that I can't seem to find. But anyhow, so uh, this movie starts out with I guess Wednesday's kind of a little bit more grown up, and she seems to be. Uh, more enjoying school and the way she is doing things. And she actually comes up with this experiment uh, as to basically, well, not basically, but she f comes up with this experiment to take DNA from animals and insert it into humans to make them, I guess, smarter. Because it seems that her squid is smarter than her uncle Cyrus, which I find extremely funny. So, uh, yeah, right. Gomez and Pugsley and Morticia show up to her science fair, even though they told her not to, <laughs> or even though she told, yeah, even though she told them not to, they still show up to like support her, I guess. So she's kind of trying to like do this experiment as a way to get rid of the traits that she calls bad in her family, um, which ends up having dire consequences at the end of the movie because... Well, I'll get into that a little bit more, but, uh, so this man shows up at their doorstep claiming that, uh, Wednesday isn't their actual child and they need to do a DNA test. And at the beginning of the movie, we have this man named Cyrus come into the school and he's like a hologram type deal thing. And he's talking to all the students and he wants Wednesday to come work with them to further her experiment because, She's actually made this uh, quite great breakthrough as far as science is concerned. So, uh, <laughs> so then when this man shows up to their door, and I guess it was one of Cyrus's henchmen we find out later on, uh, Mr. Mustello, or Mustella, right, uh, shows up and says that Wednesday isn't actually their daughter. They need to do this whole DNA test. And that Cyrus is a real father. I guess she was switched at birth or whatever is he's trying to say there. Uh, of course, they think it's just Wednesday putting this guy up to it. Uh, because she's kind of being a little bit more distance, distant than she has been in the past. And Gomez is a little concerned. He just wants to give his daughter affection and love. And she seems to be distancing herself more. But I guess it's kind of like, you know they'll come back to you when they're ready sort of thing, because I guess she's kind of in those teenage years now. So I can see why she's, um, see why she's kind of like being that way. She has that teenage angst, I guess it makes sense for this movie, uh, as they would be a little bit older now. Uh, Pugsley's still kind of the same. Um, he finds out in the movie, I guess that he's the only true Adam's child. So, and then, uh, <laughs> And then Fester actually tells him the story about when he was in the hospital and he ate all the uh, hospital pudding that was left over. 
and he had to find he was trying to find the bathroom and ended up finding the uh, nursery and he did this old uh, Adam's family trick where they like juggle the babies to make them go back to sleep and he does that and then he thinks that he puts all the babies back in the right place so now Morticia and Gomez are even more concerned that their daughter might not be theirs <laughs> uh, after he tells that story but they are trying to keep it from Wednesday at the moment um, <laughs> just because they don't want her to find out anyway she does find out uh, in her own way because she actually goes after them one night um, when they're camping in Sleepy Hollow and I'm actually kind of disappointed a little bit that they didn't make a little bit more of a reference to like the Headless Horseman because uh, that would have been really cool if they had had a scene with him in it and he kind of like chased them out of Sleepy Hollow I think that would have been uh, really awesome actually uh, so they have this uh, God, I can never think of his name. Uh, Mr. Mustello and this big bad Ronnie guy chasing them all the time uh, throughout the movie. And they're just trying to get Wednesday back to Cyrus, who claims to be her real father. But I don't know, something kind of felt off a little bit throughout the entire thing. Especially when they actually arrive to his house. Her and Lurch arrive to the house. And uh, <laughs> he invites her in and his wife is like some weird like bird creature. And his daughter looks partly pig. So I was, yeah, my sister kind of mentioned it too, because she came to see the movie with me uh, as a birthday gift from me to her. <laughs> and I, yeah, she kind of mentioned it like, I need that explained automatically because it was just so, so out of left field, right? And uh, she actually guessed it before I even did that uh, they weren't actually people, they were actually animals and they were just in people form. And then we actually find out that that was Cyrus's thing, that he couldn't do what, uh, he couldn't do what Wednesday was able to do throughout the movie. And I don't know if I touched on this, but they actually decide to go on a road trip. That's why they're all over the place, like Sleepy Hollow. They go down south into Texas, uh, San Antonio, or San Antonio, was it San Antonio or San Antonio? And then they also go to this place... Uh, what was the other place where Cyrus lives? Oh my god, I can't think of it now. Anyway, they get really deep. They get really deep south. Although, uh, it's funny because she injects uh, squid DNA into Cyrus. Or, not Cyrus. She injects squid DNA into uh, Fester at the beginning of the movie. And he suddenly, all of a sudden, becomes more <laughs> um, obsessed with water as the movie goes on. So they end up going to Niagara Falls. And <laughs> they thwart. Uh, Mr. Mustello's plans uh, at the very beginning of the movie because they all go off falls and barrels and then um, Fester just drags him down with his like one squid arm at this point <laughs> so he's slowly changing into like a squid himself because he's developing not only the smarts of the squid but also the <laughs> the squid body <clears throat> uh, so he's kind of having this weird transformation throughout the movie which is funny um because nobody really seems to take it seriously until both arms start to try to change. And then they're like, have you been noticing anything about uh, Fester's appearance lately? And then at the end of the movie, when uh, uh, Cyrus is doing his whole DNA test, and he has the Adams family in the tubes, um, <laughs> he... Uh, he ends up failing at it because Wednesday decides that she doesn't want to uh, be, I guess, like an evil mastermind, I suppose, in a sense. She just wants to do her own thing, and she feels that she does, I guess, kind of find out that the Adams family is actually her real family uh, after Cyrus just completely goes off the rails. And at the very end of the movie, he turns into, like, some weird um, crossbreed like it was like it had it was some weird crossbreed animal it had like wings um a, a chicken's head uh he was part goat part cow uh looked like he might have even had some like deer in him like he was doing all sorts of like animal dna on uh testing on i guess 
not only animals, but he wanted to do it on humans, obviously, to see how they would turn out. And I was kind of interested to see what the actual Adams Family would have turned into if he was successful in that, but obviously he wasn't, and it turns out that Lurch and Big Bad Ronnie were actually friends, and uh, I guess Big Bad Ronnie was trying to tell Lurch in the one scene when <laughs> uh, Wednesday gets shoved into this pageant that uh, Wednesday was actually in danger, and I guess they uh, were friends at the asylum together, so nothing really works out well for Cyrus at the end, and then there's this big, huge, like, boss fight at the end, which I did not see coming at all. Um, it was actually, it was actually hilarious to see it, uh, between, uh, between Cyrus and, uh, Fester, right? Jesus. Um, and then by this point, he's actually turned into a giant squid creature, and he ends up throwing Fester, or he ends up throwing Cyrus out of his laboratory, and he falls, and he does this, like, chicken squawk. Oh my god, this movie had so many laughs in it. I just have to say that, especially the scene where they're at the Grand Canyon, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I don't know when Pugsley even had the time to do this, and for, for a second there, it was actually kind of funny, because I was wondering, where is Uncle Fester? And he actually transforms in the bathroom, partially, and turns invisible. So for, like, a whole, like, scene and a half, he's not even in the movie, and then all of a sudden, they're just back in the car, and he just reappears. <laughs> just out of nowhere. He was invisible that entire time, and nobody even said anything about it. I just found that extremely hilarious. And, yeah, the scene where they're in the Grand Canyon also, um, Pugsley somehow has time to literally set up enough explosives to blow up half the Grand Canyon. <laughs> and, uh, there's this guy following him from place to place who's trying to marry his girlfriend, and he just fails miserably every time because it seems like every time he goes to do it or propose, something <laughs> something happens to them with Pugsley. It's either he was falling in the falls because um, Wednesday had this voodoo doll of him, so she's doing all this dance these dance moves with him, and then like uh, throwing him up in the air, giving him like a massive wedgie, and then she just throws him over the falls. So he he goes flying with the doll. And the guy's trying to propose to his girlfriend, and then all of a sudden she sees just Pugsley fall. And I'm not sure how he bounced back up again, but he kind of goes, well, I guess that's a maybe then. And then somehow at the very end of the movie, they were there again when uh, Cyrus's character falls out of his lair. And I'm like, why would they even be there? This is just like, a, it was an ongoing joke at that point, right? Because uh, how would they know that, uh, <laughs> how would they know where Cyrus's lair was? But anyhow, it was just kind of funny. Um. <laughs> uh, and then the he, the giant creature that he had become lands on them, and she goes, yes, I'll marry you, and he just kind of sticks his thumb out from underneath, so at least you know they weren't hurt, and uh, Wednesday does finally come around and give her dad a hug, and then at the end of the movie, when they come back, their house is just a giant party, because the grandmother's turned it into, like, uh, an event, and throughout the movie, Pugsley takes uh, advice from uh, fester, like, relationship advice, which was a horrible decision, and he had, uh, it with him on part of the trip, which was, uh, Snoop Dogg's character, and it was just kind of funny that he never took, uh, relationship advice from it, because he probably could have given him better relationship advice, and, uh, it's lines are just, like, a bunch of, like, mumbled up noises until he puts the microphone <laughs> right to his mouth at the end of the movie, and it's just actually Snoop Dogg singing clearly, which I thought was, uh, absolutely hilarious. Because the rest of his lines, I think, are just literally him saying something, but it's put into... It's either fast-forwarded or put into reverse to make it sound different. Not really sure how, how exactly how they put that effect on his voice, but um, it is interesting. Uh, and I'm not surprised at all that Snoop Dogg wants to do these movies. Um, so on this one, they went in a, on a road trip, like I said. And I don't think... Except for, like, I guess because Niagara Falls touches part of New York, right? So... Um, in the States. Uh, and they did an amazing job in the animation of that. I think that was one of the best animated scenes out of the entire movie, actually. I was surprised at how much detail they put into Niagara Falls. It was incredible, actually. Um, I was just kind of like, wow, that actually almost looks like you're really there. <clears throat> um, and obviously, uh, the Adams Family has like this ongoing joke about, like, <laughs> you would think that it would be the opposite, that they'd be joking about they wouldn't be joking about the things they joke about, but every time they go somewhere, they pick out, like, the bad parts of it, 
and they find that fascinating. Like, um, Niagara Falls has the most deaths of any other tourist attraction, and they're fascinated by that instead of the other way around. <laughs> like, uh, it's just the jokes in this are very dark, and it's kind of, yeah, it's just my sense of humor. I have a very dark sense of humor, so I guess I find it funnier than probably most people would, but I just find those little, those little like jokes funny. And uh, then at the end of the movie, yeah, they go back into their house, and Gomez actually says to them, he goes, well, we how about next time we go on a trip around the world? So that is definitely a cliffhanger for a third movie for sure. And I would love to see it because the first one was in 2018. And this one, I think, was supposed to come out maybe last year. Or No, I guess not. This one just came out this year, I guess. Um, so it would be cool to see one, another movie in the Addams Family. I think a trilogy would be awesome. Uh... This one, I didn't like it as much, quite as much as the first one, I wouldn't say. Uh, I think maybe laugh-wise, this one gave me a few more laughs. But uh, I think I think just the first one and the introduction to the family and uh, was just, it, the reintroduction to the family was just so cool. Um, and I will do a review of the first one because I did watch it a couple weeks ago, but I just didn't have time to do the review because I've been doing so much other stuff lately. Um... But I will do that and probably put them both into October because I think that's kind of kind of would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, so I gave this movie an eight out of ten. Uh, that's just what I thought it deserved. I didn't dislike the movie in any way. I just didn't think it was as good as the first one, so I couldn't rate it as high as I probably be rating the first one. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's a good good family movie actually. Or if you're an adult and you know who the Adams family is, I would say. I would recommend going to see, I would recommend seeing the first one and then going out to see this one while it's still in theaters. If, if this video is out while it's still in theaters, it should be, um, because I'm going to be uploading on Monday. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say for this movie and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye for now.